This is going to be a study on the basics of the Holy Spirit. And first I want to say the Holy Spirit regenerates. Notice that the Holy Spirit was a part of everything that was created, just like God the Father and the Son. In Genesis 1.1 it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So you see the Holy Spirit is involved in the creation. And when you are born again or regenerated, the Holy Spirit made you a new creature. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Not only does He regenerate, He also brings you to the realization of your salvation. In 1 John four thirteen. It says, Hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. And many men may teach you won't know you're saved until you die. But that's not true. Your salvation shouldn't be a hope-so salvation, but rather a no-so salvation. You need to know you're saved today. And the Holy Spirit will let you know. Romans eight sixteen says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. You don't have to go around worried about the destination of your eternal soul. You can go. You can know according to clear Bible verses if you are going to heaven or you're going to hell. So the Holy Spirit regenerates. The Holy Spirit brings you to realization of your salvation. And He also reveals. The Holy Spirit reveals the scripture to you. In John sixteen thirteen through 15, it says, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he, he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Anything you got from the Bible, the Holy Spirit showed it unto you. You didn't get it because you were smart. You got it because you had a believing heart and God was gracious enough to show you something from His Word. Anytime you understand what a preacher says when he preaches the Bible, you only understand it if the Holy Spirit reveals to you what that man is saying. It isn't the man that is a good speaker or a good teacher that reveals things to you. It's the Holy Spirit using that man to get it across to you. It's because the Holy Ghost lets you understand it. And he is the one behind the writing of the scriptures. So who better to help you understand the scriptures than the Holy Spirit? Second Peter one twenty one says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, if you are so full of yourself that you think you can correct what the Holy Ghost wrote, then He isn't going to reveal much of anything to you. You are correcting something. If you're a Christian, and you're going to approaching the Bible saying, this word shouldn't be here, and that word should really be this, that offends the Holy Spirit that's in you. If you're so full of yourself to think that you can do that, then don't expect God to show you anything from the Bible. If you will listen to what God says in His book without trying to change it, then the Holy Spirit of God will reveal things to you and then bring it to your remembrance. John fourteen twenty six says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Not only does he reveal the scriptures. He regenerates. He brings you to the realization of your salvation. He also retains the saint. God not only saves you. But he has the power to retain you. You can't be lost. And your soul won't ever face the second death in the lake of fire. God seals you up with the Holy Spirit. And nothing can break the seal. Ephesians 4.30 says. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. 
Ephesians 1, 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The moment you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you were sealed by the Holy Ghost. And nothing can break that seal but God himself, and he promises you that he won't break that seal. It's like when you are trying to get the lid off of something, and you can't do it, so you hand it to someone stronger. And the devils may try to break the seal, but they can't. So they hand it to someone stronger, the devil. But even he can't break the seal. The only one with the power to do so is God himself. In Hebrews eight thirty-eight and 39 it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if none of them things can separate you, Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can break the seal. Ephesians 2.18 says, For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't even be able to have a prayer life. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So he retains the saint. He regenerates you. He brings you to the realization of your salvation, and the Holy Spirit also reinforces the saint. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. When you feel like you are low in your Christian life, you get the word of God out, you get down and pray, and you get strength from another world. And when your flesh just says to stop, do, stop doing something like praying, that's the devil attacking you and trying to weaken you. And if you watch some inspirational movie, it is always the man strengthening himself through a song, a quote, a flashback, or memory. And then if you do that in real life, the devil is just going to take away all your strength. You can't get true strength. But the Holy Spirit brings real strength to the Christian. When you are going through a hard time, you need to call in a reinforcement. That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are armed for the spiritual battle and you are still struggling. That's when you need to call for reinforcements and that is the Holy Spirit. You get hooked up with the Holy Spirit through Bible reading, praying, confession of sin, repenting of your sin. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Every saved person has the Holy Spirit in him, but not everyone is filled. You get filled with the Spirit by doing what he tells you to do in his words. And not only does the Holy Spirit do all these things, but the Holy Spirit also raised up Jesus. So he regenerates us, retains us, brings us to the realization of our salvation and we also see that he raised up Jesus. Romans 8.11 But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you, then you have something living in you that can help you get victory over sin. You have someone living in you that can get rid of your drunkenness, fornication, witchcraft, sodomy, pornography, or any other wicked work of the flesh. He can give you victory over those works of the flesh, and you will have the fruits of the Spirit, which are in Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And if you walk in the Spirit, He will guide you into all truth. John sixteen thirteen and 14. Howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, 
that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. He won't speak of himself. He points you to Jesus Christ. And many Christians seem to emphasize the Holy Ghost over the Son. The Holy Ghost points you to Jesus Christ, not the other way around. They are both a part of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But for some reason, the Charismatics emphasize the Holy Ghost over everything else. The Holy Ghost is the one who caused us to receive the spirit of adoption. So he regenerates us. He raised up Jesus from the dead. He caused us to receive the spirit of adoption. Romans 8.15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. When I got saved, I was adopted into the family of God. God is my Father, and I am a Son of God. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, the first person born of God, but I am also a Son of God. A Christian may get off into sin and lose fellowship, but he can never lose the relationship. The relationship between you and God will always be a father and a son. And you may go against your earthly parents and do something stupid and break fellowship with them, but the relationship with your parents always stays the same. They will always be your mother and father. The same thing is true with your heavenly father. If you get off into sin, break fellowship with him, he's still going to be your father it's just you've broken fellowship. But next we see the Holy Spirit reproves. John sixteen seven through 11 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he, was co he, will, he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see him no, see me no more, of judgment, because of the prince of this world is judged. He reproves the world of sin, because as verse 9 says, they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The world refuses to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the lost world is reproved by the Holy Spirit through the words of God. Lost people hear the words of God through radio preaching, street preaching, internet videos that may pop up, or any soul winner that approaches them. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Men hate the Holy Spirit of God and would rather have an unclean spirit inhabiting their body. The Holy Spirit exposes their sin, and they hate Him for this reason. Jesus Christ is the only sinless man who ever lived and definitely has the right to expose the sin of others. He reproves the world of righteousness because he is the only righteous man who ever lived. Any man who tries to get to heaven outside of the Lord Jesus Christ is going about to establish their own righteousness because they are ignorant of the righteousness of God. And the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. In verse 7, Jesus Christ said that he has to go away for the Holy Spirit to come. He went away to the Father, and the fact that the Holy Ghost came proves that the Father accepted the sacrifice for sin. The Holy Spirit reproves this world of judgment because of the prince of this world is judged, and that would be the devil. Jesus Christ is judge of all the earth. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you don't have to face the judge as a sinner. Satan's future is already nailed in stone. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. He has already been judged. He's already got his destination fixed, and if you reject the gospel, then you're making your future the same as the devil's future, which is the lake of fire. John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Holy Spirit has done so much and does so much that it would take years to even name them all. All the things he does. He baptized us into this body of Jesus Christ at salvation. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. Uh, he's the one who baptized us into the body of Christ. Ephesians five thirty through 32 for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall the man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined into 
his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The Holy Spirit spiritually circumcised our flesh from our soul, and now every time that you sin in the flesh, it isn't applied to your soul like it was before you were saved. See, before you were saved and you sinned, all them sins were applied to your soul. So since your your soul had sin, when you die, it would have had to go to hell. But now that you're saved, your soul is washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, and your soul is cut loose from your flesh. And now every time you sin, it's not applied to your flesh anymore. That's the spiritual circumcision. Colossians 2, 11 and 12 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray for the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Comforter will stay with me forever and will never leave me. And if you want to have the Comforter, then you're going to have to be saved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. It says it plainly in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, The Gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. But not only this, he died for your sins. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. That's because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To leave out sin, to tell somebody to be saved and not let them know they're a sinner, you're leaving out a very important key piece. Because... You can't get saved until you know you're lost. You have to know that you're a sinner and that you're lost and that you're on your way to hell to be saved. Because what do you think you're going to be saved from? But if you want to be saved, quit relying on your own self-righteous works. The Bible says in Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Your works aren't counted for righteousness. Your works are the good things that you do. All these good things that you're doing isn't going to earn your way to heaven. You can't do enough good things to earn your way to heaven. Jesus Christ did all the work for you. He died on the cross. And if you will come to Him as the guilty sinner you are and put your trust in the payment for sin, His finished work on the cross, put your trust in that to get you to heaven then you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're saved by grace through faith without works. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. If salvation is the gift of God, then you're not earning it. God's giving it to you as a gift. It's up to you to come to Jesus Christ and take that gift. So come to Him today as a guilty sinner.